For this week's prepping data, we're looking at those Roman numerals again, but this time we've got the context of the Olympic Games as a reason for why we're doing that. So the games have a Roman numeral assigned to them as to whether they were the first game, second games, etc. and so forth. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to look at the length of each of these um, Roman numerals. So how many digits does it have? So we get our field here and then we're going to create a scaffold. Now the scaffold will be useful to us because it means that we can have a row per character in the games. So for example, um, it will split this IV down into two separate rows, one for the I and one for the V, so that we can um, assign numerical values to those. So um, we do our scaffold by taking the length that we just calculated in our clean step, and we want um, anything greater than or equal to um, our digits in our scaffold. So um, that will basically, for that IV example, it will give us two rows, as you can see down here, and our scaffold values for that IV will be one and two. If I move that over there, then you'll see that there. Um, so that will help us extract the first character and the second character as well. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to use that useful mid function. So we're going to say the further games row, uh, column, sorry. So for our Roman numerals, find the position as um, highlighted by the scaffold and take, you know, just one character of that, the length of our, um, this field, everything should just be a one. So we want the one character that sits at the position that the scaffold dictates. So um, for example, if we highlight our IV again, just because it's a useful example, then we can see that um, the second character is a V and the first character is an I. And that's how we're getting that back. And now we can translate that Roman numeral into its actual value. So we know that an I is a 1, a V is a 5, and an X is a 10. And then we're going to get rid of that Roman numeral column, simply because now we're going to pivot our data. And if we were to leave in that sort of lower level of detail of the Roman numeral, then it would not reduce our number of rows because we've obviously increased the number of rows to 113 at the moment. We want to go back down to our original 34 rows um, that we have here. So we get rid of that lower level of aggregation so that now when we pivot, having our, um, so basically our scaffold column is our position of the Roman numeral. So we get a column for each of those. That's like the first character, the second character, the third character, etc. and so forth. And then we just have the, that value that is associated with each of the Roman numerals in this um, aggregation column so that then we get back to our 34 rows. If we'd kept our Roman numeral uh, detail in there, we would still have a row for each and we wouldn't have all of the information for each of the games on the same row. So that's an important sort of thing to consider. So um, now we are wanting to actually create our values for our Roman numerals. But before we do that, um, we have to take into consideration the sort of ordering of our Roman numerals. So um, for example, an IV, we know that's a four. So the one becomes a minus one if we were to sum together the values. And to do that, we are just going to use some calculations. So we're looking at the first um, character and we're saying hey if that character is less than the second character so in the example of IV it's a 1 and a 5 therefore you know that the 1 has to be a minus 1 um, and that's how we're writing that calculation you need to include the ZN around um, one of the columns um, more likely to be the one that's kind of further away further along because every single um, a Roman numeral will have a first digit, but not every single Roman numeral will have a second digit. And therefore, Tableau doesn't know if that column is a null, how to answer uh, this logical statement. So we're saying, oh, if it's a null, then treat it as a zero. And therefore, um, that helps us to get around that issue. 
So if we look at our IV, for example, for that, um, for that one, then we can see that we've got a minus one now there for that value. So now when we sum together all of those columns, we would get a four, which we would want. So we do the same sort of calculations for each of our um, fields to get those minus values brought in. And then we can go ahead and calculate our year. So we're summing together all of those one, two, three, four, five, six columns and putting around the necessary ZNs um, so that we don't just get big fat nulls. And we're multiplying that aggregation by a four. And that's because obviously the Olympics are every four years. And then we've just got to add to that 1892 because we know that the first Olympics were in 1896. And so now we have our year column, which is great. We can go ahead and get rid of all these sort of unnecessary columns here and go ahead and start looking about calculating those start and end dates. Now I've chosen to use a lot of regex to calculate these dates, but I think that it's quite self-explanatory, uh, the process that I'm going through. So the reason I chose regex rather than doing a split um, on the dash is because you've got some dates where um, the start month and the end month are different and some where they're the same and I just thought this was an easier way to deal with that um, but that's just my personal preference so uh, for the start date I just want any digits at the start of the string and that's the little hat here that kind of dictates um, basically this is the starting values so that's how I get make sure that I get the first number and not just any old number in the string. And then for the end date, I'm saying that I want anything that is after the dash, any numbers that are after the dash. Now the dash from just typing on my keyboard, um, prep wasn't recognizing that um, and I was getting some nulls back. So I actually went into the start file and found a dash and copied and pasted it into prep and that worked better. So just in case you're having trouble with that too, then that was my solution and that worked for me. So maybe it's just a slightly different dash to what my keyboard usually gives me. Who knows? Um, so that's how we've got our start and end days. We do at this point later in the step, change them to be numerical because at the moment they are strings, which isn't useful when we're gonna be using them as numbers. So to get out the dates, uh, the months, um, I started with the end month and I'm so I'm just saying, you know, anything that's after that dash and number, give me whatever's left, which is the month. Um, so that works nicely. Then with the start month, I'm saying, hey, um, if we look at um, down here we've got like different ways that the start month could be so we're saying that if we've got um, a regex match um, of our uh, digits dash digits then that's going to mean that it's the same um, start month as end month so we'll take the end month out of it um, otherwise if we've got our month before the dash then we want to get that out and we know that we'll have a space around uh, before and after the month and it will be preceded by some digits. So that's how we get out our start month. Now all that's left to do is actually make this a date. So uh, we use the make date function which requires three integers for your year, month and day. So to change our month from being um, wordy to <laughs> being a number, then we use the date pass function and that's got a very handy example here at the side where it's telling you that um, the full name of a month um, is four capital M's if you're trying to pass it. So we write date pass those four capital M's in our start month and wrap that in a month function to give us back the numerical version of that um, month name and that gives us our start date. The end date has a very similar function um, and then we can start going ahead and removing the unnecessary columns, removing those nulls and we get down to the sort of streamlined data set, uh, the cleaned up data set that we were after. So I hope that was a useful uh, walkthrough of the solution and thanks for listening.